Let me introduce myself. My name is Marvin LeBlanc. I am an owner of three private companies. I am a best-selling Amazon author. I am a sales trainer, and I'm a national speaker that speaks primarily on the subject of performance. I have been in sales since 1978. I estimate that I've done about 19,600 sales appointments. So Marvin, what can you tell me in this eight minutes that I can use your information and not screw up and make mistakes like you did so that I can be better. Number one, this is going to be about four bullet points. Welcome to the group. Number one, prepare well thought out relevant questions. Now, don't just go running into a conversation all half cocked, having not actually thought about the words and the strategies you want to use with the prospective buyer. Take some time and practice. Think out your craft. You know, Michael Cinquino that's coming up next is a professional photographer, but not every one of his pictures was fantastic, right? He had to practice. He had to work with his equipment. He had to work with lighting. He had to work with the models. Well, so to you, if you want to be in sales, you have to work on your craft. And the best time to work on your craft is in your commute where I spend my time babbling trying to get my mouth and my mind to coherently uh, communicate so that a customer can get the best that they can get from my presentation. So number one, prepare well thought out relevant questions. Number two, boy this is a big one y'all, this is a big one, talk to the prospects in terms of what they want to buy not what you want to sell. Uh, it's really not about you. How I've continued to progress in my sales career is just staying obsessed with finding out what it is that they want to buy and how can my products or services or my companies assist them with what they need. And so what I'm talking about is I come from a place of permission-based marketing. I don't believe in commission breath. Do you know what commission breath is? Is when you run up to a prospect, you don't have your shit together, you're asking a whole bunch of yes and no questions. <laughs> Can you buy? Can you buy? Will you buy? Will you buy? Man, well you should get this. Hey, let me give you a heads up. No one wants to be should on. Do you want to be should on? You should do this. You should do that. Lame. You know why that's lame? Because you're too lazy to practice your crab. So practice your crab. The other thing that I got down here is breathe. <sighs> Take a breath and analyze the prospect in front of you and analyze their rhythm. Well, what do you mean, Marvin? Well, if the person is high energy, and talks really fast. You're going to have to get that rhythm. You're going to have to pick up that presentation. If they're, if they're fast talkers and they're dominant people and you're just going to be slow and you're just taking your time, there's just no way that you're going to be able to rock with those people, okay? So analyze where they're coming from. Hey, Stephanie Renard, I love you and your mom. I love you and your mom, and oh, ba bam is in the room. My goodness, are we getting superstars coming all over the place. So number one, prepare well thought out relevant questions. Number two, talk to the prospects in terms of what they want to buy, not what you want to sell. Number three, take a breath, find out their rhythm, chill out. And boy, this is good stuff. I hope you're ready for this. This is worth it for you replay viewers. There's four questions that you need to ask. And you don't ask them rapid fire. You ask a question, you shut up, you listen with your eyes, listen, listen with your heart. And so if I'm talking to Mr. Prospect and we're getting into a sales conversation, Mr. Prospect, what is it that you have that is a really interesting, simple question. 
What is it you have? It's an open-ended question. No yes and no. Yes and no questions don't give you as the salesperson enough information to continue forward in the conversation in a meaningful way. So what do you have? And so they share with you what do they have. Then we go to the second question very comfortably. Uh, well, Mr. Prospect, what is it that you like about that program? Uh, that is what's called a curveball question because hardly any time in my sales process I've never heard anybody else ask me, well Marvin, what do you currently like about your current financial plan? What do you like about your current personal development plan? What do you like about the people that you teach uh, how to speak in front of audiences of a thousand? Okay, nobody's ever asked me, well what do I like? Imagine that. Okay, Katya was just talking about it. She doesn't like those pushy people, uh, all that commission breath on top of her face. Well, if they would have just asked, what does she currently have and what does she like, she's not going to be offended. She's not going to be offended at all. She's going to be responsive. And so what we're doing with these four questions is we're finding out if this prospect is actually qualified to work with us. Now, it's not just you peddling product. You want to make sure it's a good fit because if it's not a good fit, you're not going to get good referrals. And without referrals, you can't sustain your business from one month to the next. So we go on to maybe a third question. Mr. Prospect, um, what is it that you dislike about your current program? You know, um, if there was something you could change about your current program, what would that be? Oh my God, is that a good question? Think about that. Did I not think these questions through? Yeah, sustainability, what, what, whatever it is. When you're asking these, que these questions, you better be listening. Why should you be listening? Okay, two minutes. The reason you should be listening is when you solve their problem, you better include all of the elements of the things that were important to them. Otherwise, you don't deserve to earn their business. So you see Michael Cinquino there. If you're not following him, please pull him up. And then the fourth question, after we ask, what do they have? What do they like? What do they dislike? Number four, Mr. Prospect, what do you want? If there was something that you would do differently with your program, what, what would you want that to look like? And they tell you. See, what you're going to do is formulate that proposal, that sales of those products, based on their information. Not you saying you want to buy, you want to buy, you want to buy. So my time is coming to a close. I want you to realize that if you come here and you like the content, you can go to perry10k.com forward slash Marvin and see if you can get uh, in a part of this group, be a part of this group, be a part of our mastermind and grow your business. Uh, also, you can always go to Marvin LeBlanc. If you go to that website, there's a new site there with all kind of free resources. If you have a group you'd like me to Skype with about this very subject or other subjects uh, related to sales performance, by all means, drop me a line at speaker at gmail.com. If you have a question that you were a little shy about putting right here, just drop me a, a, a private email, MarvinLeBlancSpeaker at gmail.com, and I'll be more than glad. Matter of fact, I'll be honored to help you. So uh, I believe that Michael is close to going live. Is that right, Tamara? I appreciate all of your attention, and I hope that this eight minutes of content will be value, valuable to you and that you'll start thinking about your questions to the prospect before you start talking to the prospect. My name is Marvin LeBlanc. I wish you peace. I wish you love. And of course, I wish you gumbo. Thanks for all the love. Let's go to Michael Cinquino. Bye, guys.